Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. And I'm really pissed off. I really am. Because I just found out that one of my favorite films from a very talented writer and director who had worked with Roger Corman named Jim Wanowski. For those who don't know, he's been known for directing several movies of many genres like horror, comedies, action adventure, fantasy, he even does kids films, you know, family movies, you name it. Sometimes he does hire some very hot actresses to join. And there you go. <laughs> well, he's been best known for directing one of my favorite movies that I've seen ever since I was a kid. When it was on TV, and I was even lucky enough to find a copy somewhere before I picked up the Blu-ray release back in 2016 that I had to spend an arm in a leg. But luckily for me, I used the Best Buy Rewards card and it went down to it. So, But it's still expensive. And that was... Chopping Mall. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> you know this movie. A movie about killer robots that are security robots from a local shopping mall that winds up terrorizing teenagers at night. That's the movie. <sighs> Guess what's going to happen? it's going to turn into a modern day remake and guess who's directing this Robert Hall the makeup artist behind several films including the the crazies remake from 2010 which is actually a good remake by the way a remake of the George A. Romero film which is pretty rare that even the the remake itself is actually better than the original film surprisingly <laughs> well anyway he's gonna remake this film unbelievable and I just found out already just now that it turns out that they're not gonna use kill box instead they're just gonna use mannequins great is he basically remaking Mannequin? Yes, the movie Mannequin with Andrew McCarthy, Kim Cattrall, Estelle Getty. Oh my god, man. Unbelievable. So what he's going to do is that he's just going to take the movie and shove it down our asses and they're probably just gonna zap our fucking heads and explode I don't believe this man you know the fact that I read about this just oh my god because writer-director uh, Jim Ranowski just mentioned this on his Facebook page because he just uh, found the article just recently and I found the article too and apparently I he found the article from screengeek.net which it says chopping mall remake director doesn't give a fuck yeah they censor the word what you think yes it's Robert Hall or Robert Green Hall if you like to refer to In fact, he just explained it on, on a website called Nightmare Toys that my version of Chopping Mall that I wrote is totally supernatural. How revealed, it's more the fog set in an abandoned mall than it is robots. Instead of killer robots, they are mannequins 
Yeah, they are these mannequins that are possessed by the souls of dead slaves that work at the plantation that the mall was built over. Those were his words. I'm just reading it somehow. Also, he added, Sorry guys, purists. I have a different take, which Roger Corman really, really like. Do I need to get that underway? So on and so forth. This guy is a fucking hack. No two ways about it. This guy is a fucking hack. And this is another example why we keep getting so many fucking remakes of every single movie, especially movies from the 80s and 90s, that were very popular back in the day, and they still are to this day. And yet, every single fucking remake we see, it's nothing but crap. I'm not kidding. I mean, jeez, I mean, haven't they learned their lesson after the Total Recall, Robocop, and all these other fucking remakes that we're getting of every single classic 80s and 90s movies? Like Footloose, Fame, even Dirty Dancing for crying out loud. Yeah, and it was a TV remake I haven't seen, and I'm not going to unless I had to look it up and watch it for some reason. Maybe for free. I swear to God, and on top of this, it had to be one of my favorite movies. I mean, what's next? Are they going to remake uh, one of my all-time favorite comedies, Heavyweights? I bet they're going to probably do a switcheroo because, you know, everything's politically correct these days. Let's have a female cast, all overweight. Yeah, maybe they'll just start throwing some SJW bullshit that they're pulling these days. Let's just have a Tony Perkis that's a male once again. Or, although, maybe they might have a female this time. I don't know. I, I know, I know. I should have given them ideas because then I'd be even more pissed off already. You know, because already Disney just had um, the most recent film called A Winkle in Time. But I don't want to get to that. <laughs> okay, because I know I haven't seen the movie yet, so I can't say. But this is stupid. Incredibly stupid. I mean, Jesus Christ, so... It's basically what we're going to expect. We're going to see mannequins going around, chasing down um, teenagers around who are working at the shopping mall. And they're, and they're basically just going to be bad actors anyway, because you know how this generation is. I mean, hey, don't get me wrong, though. There are good horror films out there, but... But nowadays, they're just pretty rare, so you never know how they turn out. <sighs> yeah, I would imagine that, too. And, and they're just going to come up with some annoying teenagers, most of which I can't stand. <sighs> this is not fair. It really isn't. You know, you got a lot of great actors in this movie. A lot of good actors, all which had worked so fucking hard to do this. They filmed this at Sherman Oaks Galleria back in the 80s when it was such a popular shopping mall. Which I know half of the shot was uh, done at Beverly Center and Beverly Hills, but that was just uh, an actual shot of the um, exterior. I mean, look at this cast right there. See? You can tell how badass they were. They worked so hard, including uh, Kelly Mahoney. Because Jim, however, hired her because of her performance in the movie Night of the Comet. You got tons of good features on this release. And this is an awesome transfer right there. I mean, yes, there are a few issues but that's okay it plays even better now on blu-ray and the fact that they put this 
on a new label for Bestron that Lionsgate uh, owns as we speak. And the fact that he ha that Germanowski actually owns 22% of this movie, he owns the 22% of, of the rights for this film, along with Lionsgate, that's under the Bestron video label, the Collector Series. And that's what he said on his Facebook account. I mean, this is ridiculous. I can't believe this, man. I wish one of these kill bots would just go up to Robert Green Hall and just fucking zap his fucking head. And then he'll go up and he'll say, Thank you. Have a nice day. See how he likes it. I'm getting sick and tired of these fucking remakes these days. You know... I know sometimes you know I, I can I can probably deal with maybe a few as a time waster or so when it comes to these reboots and something like that but I, I know I mean like that Ghostbusters uh, reboot with the female cast that Paul Feig had done but then we had to have some other garbage movies even though yes there are sequels like for example the Jumanji sequel Welcome to the Jungle, which just came out uh, this week on Blu-ray and DVD and digital and 4K. Fuck that. I'm not picking that up. I'm just fucking tired of this. I really am. God, man. Jim Ranowski deserves better than this. Choppy Mall deserves better than this. The entire cast deserves better than that. God damn it, man. You know, I really hope Jim does sue that asshole. Because then it shows that that he did obtain the rights to it. I mean, after all, he came up with the idea for this movie. It was his idea. And they're basically stealing it from him. Yes, he came up with this idea of having killer robots. And the fact that he cast... Uh, the entire cast of, of young actors, all which are now old already. And the fact that he cast um, Kelly Mahoney, and she had a strong lead in this movie. She really did. She, she took the guts and will to actually be in this, and it even shows uh, how strong she really was. <laughs> exactly, because after all, this is the same actress who was in Fast Times at Richmond High, you know, as a cheerleader. <sighs> Unbelievable, man. I'm sick and tired of this. I mean, this is a movie I watched when I was a kid. When it was on TV, it was on Cinemax, HBO, and USA Network, I believe. You know, and the fact that I, I found a copy on DVD before I picked up the Blu-ray which looks even better and that's what we got <laughs> okay I'm sorry man I, I just I had to rant on it because I just can't believe I'm hearing this and I feel sorry for everybody who's involved but nevertheless I'm gonna stick to the original Chopping Mall because I love this movie to death and I'm going to keep it that way and I'm not wasting or even spending an arm and a leg for this shitty remake that's going to come out no way, no how I'm sticking to this and that's all it's to it there you go <laughs> and by the way for those who haven't picked this up Go to Best Buy or any other store, or hell, get it online like Amazon, eBay, or whatever store that's available, and pick up a copy. And you'll appreciate how good and hard work that this film had been done, considering that this was for its budget. I mean, it was a low budget, but it was a good budget. 
for such a small project right here that we never thought we would see and never thought we were going to get. And I'm happy that we have it. So anyway, <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah. of course I also forgot to mention the movie had a lot of cameos too, like including the Dick Miller, who's been in some several uh, Joe Dante films and any other film he's been in in his career. The fact that he has a small role in the film. I mean, geez, you, you gotta give that guy credit too. Well, that's my rant on this upcoming Chopping Ball remake that's gonna come out. I don't know when, but I'm definitely not looking forward to it. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna stick to the original film. Period. So anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.